Okay, so now on to the fumble of the week. It is a very critical moment in time for women in this country, Samaria, as I'm sure you of all people well know. Uh, you all's right to choose what to do with your bodies has been infringed upon by our government. And there's some out there who think they can just walk up to you all and grab you by the genitalia as a generic greeting of some sort. Weird to me, but that's just what some people think they can do. Uh, there, of course, has been some really good things happening for women in this country of late. We have a black woman running for president as the face of a major party. Kudos. Shout out to Kamala. And there's been a huge uptick in the investment into women's sports by corporations and fans alike. But every time it seems like there's a giant step forward for the fairer sex, there's something that happens that attempts to reverse course any momentum that is building. Uh, this week in federal civil court, De'Ara Kahambi of the Los Angeles Sparks filed a lawsuit claiming that she was the victim of the Las Vegas Aces by means of intimidation, discrimination, and retaliation for, of all things, being pregnant. Now, Hamby was subsequently traded in January of 2023, and like I said, she now plays for the Sparks. Until this plays out in court, though, I cannot make a definitive statement in favor of the accuser or the accused. Uh, so the fumble of the week this week is going to a general fumble of the week for any entity treating people discriminatorily, for any company and or individual targeting those who are vulnerable in our society. These stories are the kinds of stories that really throw off the good energy surrounding a league that is quickly becoming must-see television. Uh, you just simply cannot make women feel intimidated to live full lives, man. And, and if it comes out that they wanted De'Erica gone because they ain't like her game, then let that also be a reminder to athletes out there that everything is not personal. So a very generic, broad fumble of the week this week. So I wanted to just have this conversation to a degree on the show today, uh, Samaria. But let me know, what are your thoughts on this lawsuit? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely terrible. Just like reading all of the documents. Of course, we know that De'Erica... Uh, is alleging that Becky Hammond asked her if her pregnancy was planned. They are um, were assuming that she was not going to be ready for the season, which in fact she was. I mean, that's just so crazy to think about. She had her baby in March. The next month she was there for training camp. And then the following month she started the season and she played 40 games, all 40. Yeah. She did not miss a game for the LA Sparks. And so I just... I mean, obviously, whatever she alleged in the beginning, the WNBA did their investigation. They suspended Becky Hammond for two games. I think what's going to be really interesting for me is the WNBA Players Association versus Becky Hammond's team, because we've already seen mm -hmm. the Aces stand beside her in this. We saw Asia. We saw Kelsey. We saw Candace Parker say we stand with Becky. But the Players Association is standing with Dierica. So I think it's going to be really interesting. And in, like once, like you said, all of this comes out, I, I'm just really like, I, I just don't know what's going to happen because I think at a certain point, I, Candace has children, but Kelsey and Asia, those are the only three women that I saw speak out publicly for Becky, but I'm sure most of the other players did. But Candace is a mother. And so I think it's going to be interesting to see if, Dierica's claims are substantiated. Is she gonna change her tune? I don't know. Yeah. I think also one other thing that was weird in the in the lawsuit was that Dierica actually wanted them to rescind the trade. She wanted to go back to Vegas. Mm. And I'm this is all alleged in the in the documents. But I thought that that was so weird. I'm like, after you said these things or alleging these things, why would you want to go back and be yeah. well, under I that coach? Well, the Aces are the premier team in the WNBA, right? They are the defending yeah. uh, champions. And they also have a lot of perks. I don't know if you've seen their players' locker room. It's phenomenal. The arena they play in is play in is brand spanking new. And I believe, I don't know if you remember, but last year there was, um, after they won the championship, I can't remember who it was, but they offered um, the players of the team like an additional $100,000 or something like that just because they played for the team and had won a championship. And it wasn't the, it wasn't the organization. It was like some local uh, Las Vegas businessman. So th there is there seems to be a lot of perks that, that play for that Las Vegas Aces team. Uh, again, even the, the colorway of the organization just looks strong, powerful. So I can understand wanting to, to, to stay there. Yeah, well, well, listen, Las Vegas also tax free. So there are a lot of implications. You got to go play in Los Angeles where the taxes are crazy out here. So that also cuts your salary. So there could be a number of factors that that 
lead that that steered her towards wanting to go back to play for the Las Vegas Aces. So you know, I don't want to I don't want to assume any of them are are true or or, or false, right. but I just can understand desiring to stay where you are. One because of comfortability, could be schools, a lot of different things. You know, whatever. Um, but this is an interesting story. It's unfortunate, you know, in either direction. Uh, there does seem to be a, a real potential here for this to be an ongoing issue for the WNBA, right? Like, how do they navigate these situations and scenarios where, you know, we want to win a championship, you're about to have a baby, like, you, you know, your life is kind of messing up the business model, especially if you're a key player. I, I don't know how, why are you shaking your head? No. Because I'm saying that just sucks. Like that, I'm saying I hate oh, that. I hate yeah, that but that is women's sports is, you know, well, what like are your you thoughts said, on that as a woman? Yeah, like I mean, like, like I said, I think it's 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 it really sucks. But if you have if you play for a franchise that's like, okay, we'll just pivot, but we still want you, not a franchise that's going to accuse you of signing a contract or an, a two year extension while you were pregnant, because that's what she's alleging in the documents in the lawsuit. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I just think it's horrible because I I don't know if she planned it or not. I, like no one knows, um, but she's saying that it wasn't. It was unplanned. Her pregnancy was unplanned. And she was thinking that she was going to get the backing from the Las Vegas Aces. In turn, they questioned her character and said that she was doing this basically just to get a check and that she wasn't going to play. But then she proved them, them wrong because she literally went. And that's what I'm saying. I can't even imagine being pregnant. She was working out and training up to seven months. She had the baby. Two months later, she started the season and did not miss a single game. Yeah, that 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 is that's like I that's mean, a superpower. Super that's a superpower. Yes, that super. That, that is that is. All right, so let me let's remove the Erica situation from the equation, right? Like, okay. let's just say you are uh, the general manager of a team on the precipice of winning a championship, right? You're entering a season. You're about to enter a season, and a player that you are, you know, really relying upon to help you get over the threshold of winning a title is pregnant, right? How would you handle that situation? What what is your what is your thought process in figuring out how to overcome a pregnancy in order to to win the ultimate goal of the business, which is to win a championship? I mean, you pivot, you pivot, you go out, you find somebody. The season had not started. You can go pick mm -hmm. up somebody. I mean, honestly, they went on and won a mm -hmm. championship without her. So, I mean, not to say that she wasn't valuable for the team. She was. We can see what she's done in two years in Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, you just have to pivot. You can't accuse them or blame the woman for getting pregnant because that's just a natural part of our lives. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very yeah, tricky. It, it's very yeah. nuanced. It's and very, very nuanced. You can't just say, nuanced. I'm afraid you. <sighs> you, you can't, but you... You can't. Legally, you cannot. You cannot trade a player off of race. Like, well, tr uh, tr you can trade. You can trade, right? I don't think you can like cut. I don't know the. That's what I'm saying. I don't know the legalities around that because trading someone is not the same as like cutting them and saying that but you, you but are firing them. Says, documents say that you cannot trade a player in the WNBA for their race, their sexual orientation, all that type of stuff. Religion, yeah, but that's but, but pregnancy, pregnancy. But but wouldn't pregnancy and I'm, I don't know, I don't know, so don't kill me. But wouldn't a pregnancy almost be like a, a torn AC, a torn ACL, right? Like it's it's an impediment to your physical ability to do the job, and so. But if, but in if, but in Dierica's case, it was not. I'm again. I have removed the Erica. I'm just talking okay. about going Sorry. forward in future situations. Let's remove the Erica situation out of the equation. I'm just saying, like, does it not pose? Uh, a reasonable understanding that hey if somebody is physically incapable of doing this job i need to trade them elsewhere so that we can get somebody in here who can help us win and actually is physically capable of being a part of this team is how do you i don't know how you manage that i don't i don't know i don't know that but uh so. yeah this is going to be very interesting to see well the wnba has already done their investigation but what comes out mm. of this lawsuit because you know, there's no denying that Becky Hammond is an tough. amazing coach. Like, but tough. the best. But is she a good person? We don't have to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, um, yeah, let's just let's wrap it up because I don't want to get no trouble. So y'all let us know your thoughts <laughs> in the comments section uh, about this lawsuit between Becky Hammond and the Las Vegas Aces and De'Arica Hamby.